Hello, moving along with this electric bike project, I'm going to try a quick test fit of this bottom bracket and the chain ring and the motor. Uh, I don't have any batteries yet, they're probably still a few weeks away, so there's not much point leaving this stuff on there. I might take it all off and put the standard stuff on again, just temporarily. Well, I might leave this on, but there's certainly no point leaving the motor on there. It's just adding five kilos of dead weight to pedal around. Uh, the other main point of doing what I'm doing today is to put the motor on and see how it sits up underneath the bottom uh, down pipe, down tube of the bike and measure the distances there and see what kind of a bracket design I might have to make to get it to sit up there. If I'm, I'm thinking about maybe getting a, a bracket water jet cut to, you know, have a custom bracket to make it sit up there really nicely. So yeah, just going to familiarize myself with these pieces and check that everything fits is the goal for this video. Uh, so this is the bottom bracket and this is stated to be fitting a 68 to 73 millimeter bottom bracket and the one on my bike is just on 73 so I'm assuming that's what they mean here with this uh, the edges that I've marked in the photo are the edges of the actual frame of the bike the other pieces are so, some sort of spaces or something like that but 73 is what um, the actual frame is and when I measure this, um, there's actually two sort of sections to this. You get a big bearing in the middle there, and there's a bearing in the middle there. So this piece is going to turn inside that bearing. This one seems to be stuck there. It doesn't move along here, um, which is interesting because... Uh, so this side is going to be the non chain wheel side and that will slide into the bike's bottom bracket like that and then this one will be tightened from this side and I read that these are actually different direction threads because this one is um, left to tighten and this one is a normal righty tidy one like that so this piece is just a solid at this edge here it's just solid connected with the middle but on this side we have this ring which goes around in that thread and then this whole piece comes off. So I think the idea is that you put your motor around the bottom bracket like that and then you'll thread this whole assembly in like that to hold it together. Um, so the distance that you're going to end up with is, well the whole distance that this bracket has to clamp down onto is the outside of these two plates. Um, which is where I f sort of get a little bit puzzled because the distance between this here is it's exactly 10 centimeters from the outside to the outside but there's a couple of little spaces here which are exactly two centimeters each and from what I can tell uh, you can remove either one side of them so there's one one there and one there on each side and you can remove one of those sides to shift this across or I suppose you could maybe put two on one side and move it a long way across maybe I'm, I'm not sure I'll have to undo it and sort of play around with those but sh and shift them around a little bit to see how it works but what's interesting is that when you <clears throat> so let's say I remove one of these so that the total distance from the outside of these two plates is now going to be eight centimeters this piece here um, doesn't look like it securely fits over there at eight centimeters. So let's see if I can just hold this, to show you what I mean. So at eight centimeters, it's going to be about there. So this is all. I'm just sort of roughly holding it together. But my point is that this um, is not sitting over here anymore. I guess it's okay. It doesn't seem very secure. I would have thought that at least if this was sitting over there, it would be a little bit holding holding this end of the bearing piece a little bit more securely. But I guess that's how it has to go, isn't it? So this is, this is probably the section I will leave um, permanently in the bike from today. This doesn't need to be changed too much in the future as far as I can tell. And the other thing that I'm going to try attaching today is this uh, chain ring. And there's a quite a fine thread 
in the inside of there and it goes to one of these pedal cases you see cranks see they're different this one has nothing much on the side of it and this one has a nice fine thread which matches um, which matches the inside of that chain ring so that goes in there you got to be quite careful with that not to mess up the threads when you're getting it in but I gave it a quick test before and it uh, goes in quite nicely so I'm going to try putting that on as well first thing to do is remove that I guess and then that and take this off well that came off easy enough it's uh, it's one of those different kind of spine things it's not a square one I forget what these are called I can never remember these names uh, anyway, so next step is to get this piece off, and this is where this thing is going to come in handy. It'd be kind of stuck if I didn't have this toolkit, wouldn't I? Oh, that was pretty easy too. It turns out that the piece that I was measuring that I thought was the outside of the frame is not actually the outside of the frame, because it's this, this little ring here is a separate piece, so it's actually going to be a few millimetres narrower than the 73 millimetres that I was trying to measure. It's probably going to be more like... 70, 68, maybe it's a 68. So with everything on that side off now, this uh, other piece, just tap it with a hammer and sort of slid out like that. Uh, I actually had to undo this side as well before I could pull it right out. So that's it over there, that's the standard bits. And now that I've got all that off, it is actually 68 millimeters from side to side here. When I held the motor in place above the bracket there, it becomes pretty obvious that in order to line the chain up with sort of roughly with the middle of that section there, the pieces on here that need to be removed are the ones on this far side, like uh, opposite side from the uh, gear cog there. And these are just uh, threaded tube inside with what looks like about M6 screws so I'm going to reduce this down to 8 centimeters on this side and I think what I'll do is I'll I'll leave these plates on and I'll just convert whatever I'm doing today I'll leave it on there permanently except for the motor itself so I'll just detach these plates from the motor so I don't have this big heavy weight to, to ride around with and the rest of it can be um, stay on there permanently. This uh, silver cylinder that goes in the middle is actually threaded in both sides and there's a piece of screw coming up from below there so that when this is on there when that's on there like that there's not enough room to screw this screw in all the way from the top so I think what you're supposed to do is put this spacer back onto it again on the top <laughs> seems a little bit strange the reason why I say that's strange is that when it's done like that so that's how it's going to be screwed in you only get about five or six millimeters of thread to hold the whole thing together. Seems, seems a little bit weak maybe. So with this two centimeter spacer on the outside now, the interior dimension between the middle of these two plates is about 71, just over 71 millimeters. And that's going to be a few millimeters too wide for that. So what I'm going to do is, um, from the old setup, there's a few of these sort of uh, big washer kind of things that I think I can use to get it to a slightly wider uh, width and hopefully a couple of those should do the trick. Actually, now that I've placed this on here, it's just sort of sitting there rather loosely but this plate is up against the bottom bracket properly. Um, but it looks like this cog here is not really very well lined up with the the back sprocket. It's sort of lined up with the very outermost cog on the outside. Um, so I think what I might do is actually move this silver spacer bit to be on this side so that the whole motor is going to shift a little bit inwards and I'll see how that goes. It's going to make the weight of the motor quite a bit more on that on this side of the bike but uh, I would like it to line up better with the existing sprockets. I've decided against that now mainly because I don't have the right kind of bolts to make it happen because to put this steel spacer on that side 
it's actually going to bring it quite a ways out. Another problem is that you're going to start running into this uh, tension cog here. It's quite quite close, so this plate would end up about here, and that's going to give you problems. Um, if I had a huge selection of what are these M6, I think bolts that I could you know adjust the length to get it somewhere nice, I would give it a try. But for now, I think I'll just go with the way that they've got it set up. I think I'm going to take this front derator off completely now because I never really used it much when I was riding to begin with and I'm pretty much not going to use it anymore um, so it's just getting in the way and that means I can remove this whole cable and everything as well. Okay I have the first side in now this is the one that tightens by turning counterclockwise like that and I removed the bracket from the motor again just to get it in there uh, it was just a bit awkward to try and hold that 5 kilo weight here while you're very carefully threading this in to make sure you don't ruin the threads. Um, so what I'll do after I've finished all these measurements is I'll just put this plate down there like that and maybe zip tie it around this um, piece here to hold it still. And I'll just ride the bike with no motor for a while like that. So over on this side I'm going to use two, I think two of these uh, rings are about two and a half millimeters in width but I need to put them in there to space it out so that the distance between these two plates is going to be correct when they're holding the motor on and I didn't put any over there because I want this side to be inward as much as I can get it okay I have the motor attached there now and I ended up with 81 millimeters from the outside of the plates there versus 80 millimeters from the outside of the plates there so there's a one millimeter difference or I guess a half millimeter each side and it's sort of pinching in a little bit like that but that I don't think that's going to be a problem it's not not much of a difference I was hoping that when I put this on because there's two chain wheels here we might be able to move the chain inwards by that distance but unfortunately it seems like when we put this on it's made to match up uh, unless I can sort of tap it in further with a hammer or something I might try that in a minute but it looks like it's made to line up perfectly with this so that the inner of these two wheels lines up with this one and then you'd have to use the outer of the wheels to go to the back which is going to make things even worse so as well as taking the front derailleur off completely, I've also removed the um, gear lever for it because I don't need that anymore. Um, and I've switched the brakes from being... When I got the bike, this was the rear brake and that was the front brake, which seems very strange to me after riding motorbikes for about 20 years or so. Um, that was just not going to work with my, my brain. was not going not to learn that one, apparently. Um, so I switched the brakes over. Now ideally I would also switch the gear levers over because the right hand is getting kind of busy and it's, uh, it's going to be doing throttle and brake and gear all, all over here and this um, uh, lever here to change down gears is really kind of in the way of the throttle when you're twisting your hand there and again from a motorbike riding perspective uh, it feels a bit strange to have your gears on that side because on a motorbike you've got gear well not gears but the clutch you've got your clutch there and then you change your gear down with your foot right so gears are sort of on the left side is how my brain is uh, a little bit more wired to work so ideally this nine nine click gear changer thingy would go over here but just from looking at the insides of this one I don't think it's going to be very easy to do that because it's definitely not a symmetrical assembly it's pretty pretty neat the way it works. Let me see if I can just hold this in front of the camera and uh, click it. So we are in we're in the lowest one at the moment, and it's got these little ratcheting bits that one click is one gear change, and it's not it's not able to release the cable back that way. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So then to go change down, you go. Eh, what? Like this. There we go. Uh, and it's made for three gear.
gear positions on this side for sure. So what I was hoping is that I could take out that little ratcheting wheel and replace it with the nine position one that's going to be on on there. But none of this looks very symmetrical and also it's seems to be like stamped into place, like riveted sort of, so there's no screws to undo that assembly. Although I might have a bit more of a look at it and see if I can open it up a bit further, but um, for now I might just have to settle with having the gears on the right hand side, which I don't like, but we'll see how it goes. That's the, <laughs> that's the mantra, isn't it? See how it goes. Um, don't fix it unless it's broken, I suppose, is a good way to do it. I'm just getting some dimensions and uh, seeing how the motor fits on and where it might be a good place to put a bracket for it. What I'm thinking is that in the same way as this aluminium block holds on that plate, there's another two bolts here, so there's like there and there, and they have the same kind of thing here where a bracket like that could be made to fit on those and they go directly over the bar which is kind of kind of good so what I'm thinking is that a bracket that goes through both of those and down here uh, would have to be two pieces or maybe even three pieces which is a bit of a bummer but um, I'm sure something could be nicely cut to go and hold it on to just there um, I may not bother with that because I've heard that some people have been using that hose clamp and the big zip tie that comes in the in the motor kit and it sort of holds the motor on okay. So if I get impatient after the batteries arrive, what I might do is end up just using the hose clamp and the zip tie and doing a few test rides to see how it works with that. But eventually I'd like to get a nice bracket. So I'll measure it up anyway and um, <laughs> see how it goes. And of course this big triangle, or uh, it's four sides really, isn't it, this one? Um, I'm measuring this up and trying to figure out how batteries and speed controller could fit into there. There's one other thing that I had kind of forgotten to check that was also quite important and that is the clearance on this side of this pedal. But it's, uh, it's quite quite good. Well, it's about 8mm between there and the motor. And on the other side over there between the motor shaft and, and that pedal it's about 1cm. So there's only two millimeters difference in the clearance on each side. So this motor couldn't really go too much more one side or the other, which makes me think that I have got everything in the position that it's supposed to be in. Um, so it is rather weird that the, the rear um, sprocket doesn't line up as well. I found that when I laid the motor down onto the pipe here, uh, it's a little bit hard to see here, but it, it almost simultaneously touched the pipe at the aluminium bracket and the central part of the motor at the same time so it couldn't really be laid down any closer to this pipe I'm quite pleased with that actually because it makes the overall look of the bike a little bit more sleek in fact I've seen a lot of the e-bike conversions this piece here it sort of juts downwards this being down of course because the bikes upside down so it sort of juts downwards and it stands out quite a lot when you look at the bike and it just sort of looks a bit out of place but this one's actually sloping slightly upwards and um, it fits in quite nicely with the frame being all black and it doesn't look too ugly at least in my opinion. I tried to ride the bike a little bit just now but I had a problem in that this piece here and it's kind of hard to do it um, by hand but when you put your body weight on it it felt very very soft really spongy actually and it seems that the problem is that this piece that holds that side on. Let me just undo this. This piece that goes in there, it needs to go in far enough to have this little cup go around the bearing inside there. And if it doesn't, the bearing is just, it's sort of floating. It's not touching the walls of the cylinder in there. So it's free to move when it has a bit of weight on it. Um, so what I'm going to do is take out one of these spacer rings that I put in there. Maybe I've got one too many now. And hopefully that extra 2.5mm depth of having this going in will be enough to reach the bearing and 
hold it away from the edges. Over on this side, I've got this spacer ring in here, which I don't think I need. So I'm just going to take that one out, and that would make everything another 2mm or so further over that way, which will be just right. After much confusion, I've finally figured out what I ideally should be doing. The distance between the two plates that mount the motor should be exactly the same as what I have for the width of the bottom bracket, which is 68 millimeters. As I have it here, it's about 72 and a half millimeters. So what I've decided to do is file away about four and a half millimeters or so of this aluminium block there and there where I've marked with the marker. And uh, hopefully that will match everything up nicely. I uh, used a hacksaw to do that instead of a file, of course, uh, much quicker and easier and straighter. So I think with this now I might finally have a good fit. Okay, I think I've pretty much got everything sorted out now. So I fitted the motor back on and now this side is very nice and tight. Uh, I haven't tried to ride it yet, but I'm just from feeling it like this, it feels pretty good. These two plates are now perfectly parallel instead of being sort of pinched in at one end. And I've also discovered that if I tighten this up a lot, it felt quite tight, but if I kept pushing it, it kept going in and in and in quite a way. Um, this cog is now much more aligned with the outside of the chain, uh, the outside chain ring here. <clears throat> so um, overall, I'm quite a bit more pleased with this than I was an hour ago. So I'm going to just leave it here for today and I think in the next video we can maybe take a look at uh, maybe thinking about take putting a bracket or something in here to hold the batteries in the speed controller. That's probably what I'll do next time. Anyway, until then, thanks for watching.